you know, you never know where a movie comes from. It's not like this, I wish it was, like the light bulb goes off and you have the whole idea. And you know, you, you don't, you, you get a, an idea, you get a little this and a little that. I had this idea about an older guy becoming an intern somewhere. Then it became a startup because that seemed like the most fun environment to put somebody in. And, um, and then what, well then what happens, you know? I'm, plot is not generally what drives me or my films. It's the relationship. So I thought, uh, yeah, not a love story. It's a friendship. It's a, as they say, an unlikely friendship. You know, a friendship between two people that would never cross paths, ever. No, the bond that, that's formed between them is what kept me writing the movie. That's what kept me there. I love the whole startup world. And I love talking about retirement. And I love talking about somebody that's not ready to quit work and the importance of work. You know, the first line in the movie is uh, Freud said, life is about work and love. And he said, I'm retired and my wife is dead. So there's my premise. He misses having a love relationship and he misses having a, a relationship with work. So although he doesn't fall in love with Anne Hathaway's character and he does meet a woman, an older woman his age, you know, that he does fall for, he does in a way have a love relationship with Anne because it's a, it's a strong friend, a really strong friendship forms and I, I loved writing that friendship that didn't have to cross over into any other place. A relationship begins, he, he does things for her, he steps in when her driver she, can't, she doesn't have a license, so someone drives her. And um, when he's unable to drive her for a period of time, he steps in, and now he's in the car with her and hears everything that's going on at the company. And little by little, he shows her who he is, and she begins to rely on him, and more than that, is comforted by him. She finds great comfort in being around him, and as she's surrounded by boys in sneakers who don't shave, who, you know, they're the slacker boy role model, you know, which is pretty pervasive. She sees this man in a suit who shaves every day, who shows up, who carries a briefcase, kind of knows what she's thinking before she can say it, follows through. It's kind of heaven in a way. And he becomes a big part of her, of her life. It was a dream. It was just a dream. Uh, we're very similar in the way we approach work. Uh, I had more wardrobe fittings with him than any actor in any movie in 35 years. And when you look at the movie, you kind of think he's always in a gray suit and a blue shirt, but he's not. He's in all different shades of blue and gray and different kinds of blue shirts. And um, you know, whether or not it was a button down collar or not, you know, we talked about that forever. I mean, he, we liked talking about it forever. We liked having that discussion, you know, and we tested different kinds of shirts and he's, character he's just he's he's a character actor who's a leading man who's a character actor I guess meaning he has no vanity and he throws himself into the character and he's a chameleon he became this person it was the second day of shooting uh, when I saw him we were in the coffee shop scene where there's a little mishap between uh, Annie and Bob's characters and she has to go she's done something that she feels isn't right and she goes to apologize to him and he's waiting for, he, somebody else asked him to go get coffee. And he's waiting for the coffee. And I saw him standing with his hands folded, waiting for the coffee. He, yeah, he was on camera. I was gonna say he wasn't. He was, he was on, but I saw the way his hands were folded. And it was day two and I said, oh, he's got this character. He totally gets how this man stands. He's got a walk for him. He's got a haircut for him. He's great with dialogue. He's a great dialogue actor. And he's one of the best listeners I've ever, you know, when you get into the cutting room and you really get to watch somebody's performance without any distractions. I was so, I had lunch with him last week, I was telling him this. You listen so well as an actor. So you want to be on him listening sometimes while the other person is talking because you're hearing it as he hears it. And he's just so, he's just such a brilliant, brilliant actor and so relaxed. He's also the most relaxed actor in front of the camera I've ever worked with. Uh, well, Annie is, uh, you know, I called her the A student. Um, she has great drive. She has fantastic energy. She's, uh, she's so enormously talented. And she took the words 
head on you know she didn't try to change things she's not from the school of you know you might if i try this or could i say this instead you know she learned the words and i gave her so many words you've seen the movie there's some scenes where she's got pages and pages of dialogue and she had that down in prep and um yeah she's got uh she's got substance she's clearly very smart um and she's got a quirkiness to her, which I love in my actresses that I work with. She's not straight down the middle, which I love. I often had, you know, scenes with Adam and Zach and Bob. And Bob, you know, ha ha he's, he has a certain aura on the set. Not everybody goes up to him and, you know, they let him be. He's on the phone, you know, or he's, not, he's texting to somebody when he's not acting, you know. But the intern boys never left him alone for a second. It was, and I loved it because it's just what the boys do to Bob in the movie. They want to know everything about him. How come we're sweating and you're not? How? Yeah. <laughs> that was really funny one day when they were running and Bob's in a wool suit and the boys are in t-shirts. At the end of every take, the boys are dripping wet and Bob's just walking back to, you know, to start over again. And one of the kids said to him, why, why don't you sweat? He said, years of practice. Um, so they wanted to know everything about him. Well, what, what do you? What time do you get up in the morning? What do you work out? And what time? How do you get? Do you learn your? You know, they want to know everything. I mean, they get a chance to be with Bob De Niro all day. They grilled him millions, and he was adorable with them. They already had this great rapport, and she's got this fantastic laugh. And when you're working with her, you you know, she just if she goes up on a line, she just cracks up for a minute. She's really has a very infectious, adorable personality. I want the audience to um, have fun at this movie. I want them to be entertained in this movie. Hopefully, I'll give them some things they might want to talk about afterwards. Um, but I really think if I did, there's one scene in the movie, as you know, that's over six minutes long where people are sitting and talking. Bob and Annie are sitting and talking. If the whole movie was like that, I mean, you'd get worn out, right? And if the whole movie was them running around like in the heist scene, it's that's that kind of movie. But um, Hopefully, I have woven this in a way that when those things happen, that's good. You like that change of pace.